pretty clear and apparent that entertainment has gone online. Globally over-the-top content or OTT has been the key driver for video and media consumption growth. Advertising has already moved digital with the share and spend on video advertising only increasing by the day. In fact, a recent Boston Consulting Group report pegged the international OTT market pie at $76 billion. Meanwhile, in India, a recent study found that Indian viewers spent an average of 70 minutes a day on video platforms. And in the recent changing times, as the world adapts to a new normal with more time spent at home, OTTs have witnessed a 20% plus increase in viewership on their platforms, with 87% more time spent on OTTs every day. Today, there are 40 OTT media providers in the country, and a BCG report suggests the Indian OTT market size will hit $5 billion by 2023. So in these times of social distancing and work from home, digital consumption of entertainment has seen a huge lift, and how are current OTT players unlocking this potential? With the increase in streaming services in the country, we are seeing, of course, brands that are left with an unprecedented opportunity to reach out to consumers. But in a price sensitive market like India, where consumers are more geared towards free content that are supplemented via ads rather than subscriber based content, how are OTT players really monetizing and differentiating themselves in their space and tying up for branded content partnerships? For more insights, we are joined by Rajiv Dal, the Chief Revenue Officer and Head of Business at Z5 in India, which is, of course, one of the fastest growing content tech platforms. Rajiv has worked in leadership positions across various media houses, advertising firms, as well as consumer internet companies. So who better than him to deep dive uh, with into this space? Thank you so much, Rajiv, uh, for your time today. I'm sure you're keeping yourself well entertained these days. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thanks for inviting me uh, for this interview. I'm very happy to talk about everything that we have learned in the last 45 days. And the, the life seems to have changed for everybody and so is for us. That's right. So straight to my first question, uh, Rajiv, you know, um, life has changed a lot and we are, of course, spoiled for choice when it comes to entertainment. Numerous OTT platforms out there. There is, of course, rising popularity of video streaming services. So how has Z5 really uh, stood apart and made its mark? Let me tell you the results first, and then I'll tell you the process. So results are in last 45 to 60 days, five key actions have doubled up for Z5. Number one, news consumption on the platform has doubled up. Movie consumption on the platform has doubled up. Number of paid subscriptions, the s business has almost doubled up for us. Total time that is spent by users, and our viewers on the platform has doubled up. Mm -hmm. And last but not the least, something which is opening up uh, new frontiers for us is connected TV space. That has doubled up. So that's very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. So these are five key result areas uh, that define that actually OTT is seeing a clear upswing and Z5 is also at the helm of that growth. So that's where we are right now. Now to answer your question on how we are different from others and, and there is so much of clutter in the market. So right from the beginning, when we started the business around almost two years back, right from inception, we were very clear that we will invest in not only making content, but technology as part of our vision to uh, be seen as a contact brand, which is content and technology mix, mm -hmm. rather than just another platform to consume uh, content. And we've been very uh, aware of this fact that there will be a need in future. So we began with content, not just in 12, one, uh, two languages, which is Hindi or English, which is what most platforms do. We started straight away with 12 languages. Obviously we had uh, some benefit coming in from our uh, parent company. So we started with 12 languages to cater to the length and breadth of India. We use the opportunity provided by VOD. So video on demand, actually allows you to offer a wide range of content and meet the diverse needs. We observe that people are not willing to look at linear uh, view of TV, which is a program to be telecast at 9 p.m. to be seen by millions. That's not going to be the reality going forward. To dip into that uh, part of the market, which is approximately 30% in our estimate already, 
So VOD allows uh, people to watch what they want to watch, when they want to watch, where they want to watch. Mm -hmm. So it gives them flexibility. And uh, so that's been our plan. In less than two years, we already have 125,000 plus hours of content on the platform. This includes massive movie library that we have, very extensive library of catch-up TV, which mm -hmm. is a huge market uh, that we are leading uh, from front. Uh, we have curated news as well as live news for all our viewers. Mm -hmm. We have music videos, we have live events, we've got cine plays, kids content, and now HTML5 games, we are considering games as very much as a part of uh, entertainment content. And very, very soon you will be seeing some micro uh, duration content on our platform as well. When I say micro, it will be like 15 second, 30 second, up to 90 second kind of content as well. Basically, our vision is to become a super app of entertainment hmm. that, should, that should cater to diverse needs of all uh, sorts of viewers, all demographics all uh, psychographics as well as all uh, geographic locations within India. That's right. the reason multiple languages and significant amount of content on the platform. So basically, Rajiv, you're saying that you've covered the entire gamut of things, you know, uh, be it the different genres of video in time, in terms of uh, duration, entertainment, sports, uh, news, what have you, as well as languages. So uh, just to, uh, you know, put some tangible numbers to it, it is, of course, a very hot segment right now, content tech, as you mentioned. How is Z5 really positioned in terms of uh, daily active users and downloads? So we closed last year at about 100 and plus, 100 plus million downloads on Play Store. So that can be even verified. It's mm -hmm. visible. It's an open public uh, space. Uh, in terms of daily active users, we've seen a peak of 11 million plus uh, with an average viewing time of two and a half hours per viewer. So those are uh, the published numbers. And so 100 million plus, 11 million plus, and 2.5 hours a month, a day. Uh, great, um, uh, you know, uh, numbers there, uh, great traction as well. Uh, so you have both models, as I'm given to understand, free content as well as subscriber-based uh, content. If you can break down those verticals for us. Sure, sure. So India, as we all know, is a very diverse consumer market. We have a scope. We believe there's a massive scope for AWOD and SWOT to coexist. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are possibly India is the only market where both the verticals are growing simultaneously and at a significant pace. Okay. Now, AWOD serves the mix of broadcast content, which is repurposed, and uh, it's almost delivered like live TV experience. Besides TV content, we have started creating, for the first time, some original content for AWOD as well, which is normally not to be seen. Uh, to give you an example, as recent as a week back, we've launched something called Yar Ka Panchnama. It's mm -hmm. a shoot from home celebrity chat show. It's uh, hosted by, managed by no one else but Kamal Nohata, mm -hmm. who is, a, is an industry veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, so besides original now for AWOD, we also offer live news, we offer curated news, and a very massive library of movies to our AWOD customers. So that's one part of the segment, which is uh, completely ad-funded. Okay, And that's still a very significant part of our revenue base. SWOT, on the other hand, is also growing significantly, especially during this phase, during lockdown, as I mentioned earlier. It's almost doubled uh, in terms of uh, number of subscribers that we have paid subscribers on the platform. So that's what we have seen. And in case of SWOT, we definitely offer, uh, I would say, super premium content, which is exclusively for the SWOT customers, which is programs like Mentalhood with Karishma Kapoor, then there is a movie that was called Bampar recently. With, then there is an episodic serial called Rangbaz, again exclusive to our uh, SWOT users. Mm -hmm. And as recent as, again, a week back, we have, we have brought in a movie for a theatrical release. Because of lockdown, we brought it straight onto OTT. And that's going for our SWOT customers. This movie is called Ghoom Ketu. And it's getting uh, very I mean, amazing reviews across uh, all platforms. Sure, I think direct to digital is the way to go now. Absolutely. Considering Absolutely. The lockdown. Absolutely. I think the competitive platforms are also trying to uh, do the same thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right.
Right. And uh, you know, you spoke about advertising. You've spent a lot of years in that field as well. For many years, advertising on digital platform generally meant, uh, you know, uh, websites and of course, social media, which has been widely used uh, by brands for, you know, to hype, personalize and as well as some interactive formats to engage with consumers. But how has all of that changed now with OTT uh, being in the big picture? Sure. So I would say it's changing. It's evolving. Uh, it's not uh, reached where it should reach, but it's it's moving in that direction. The direction is very positive. Uh, as you can see, even the expenditure numbers right now, if multiple media segments are either degrowing uh, or they're growing at a very slow pace, digital is growing upwards of 20, 25% year on year. Uh, so, so that itself talks about the popularity of digital platforms. And uh, within digital platforms, like any, uh, I mean, OTT is, is the next uh, wave of growth. It has changed the way people consume content with a fair number of people in urban areas that are going to the extent of deactivating their uh, DTH or cable connections. Mm. Uh, to give you a flavor of it, uh, again, uh, this is this is not official, but uh, we've just done a survey with uh, Zapper Media okay. and uh, we've been given to understand, so we are yet to get a verified report from them, that 33% of our viewers fall under a unique category of cord cutters and cord fakers. Now, yes. cord cutters uh, is, is easy to understand that people who are completely dependent on OTT platforms rather than linear TV. Mm -hmm. Cord fakers are people like you and me who got a cable connection at their home, but they're actually preferring to watch on OTT. Okay. So they are technically, they, are, they, are, they have access to uh, both the platforms but their preference or skew of time spent is more towards OTT. So 33% of our base uh, is falls under this uh, bracket of cord cutters and cord pickers. Now that's a complete shift from, or it's in the process of shifting away and it's moving very fast. Nobody expected this movement to be as fast as it is. Uh, multiple reasons, device cost is low, data cost is very low in the market. There are new age uh, internet consumers who have not even gone through the phase of understanding what email is, what a desktop or a laptop looks like. Right, Their right. first level consumption has happened on mobile. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who are now adopting uh, to uh, shifting away from linear TV onto OTT. So brand owners and advertisers perspective, they want a feedback on whether their goals and objectives are being met or they're not. So digital from day one has always been about addressable market, about ROI. Uh, that's the way it has been positioned. So we get questioned way more uh, than, than any other media. And we are happy about it because uh, this has become our competitive edge now that every action that you take now on our mm -hmm. platform is measured. Okay. To give you an example, on linear TV, what do you do? You put an ad and then you wait for people to watch. It's called, it's sold on a concept of opportunity to see, OTS, mm -hmm. opportunity to see. You may or may not see. Then there are measurement platforms that estimate on a small sample base whether you've seen or not. You compare this to digital OTT platform. Uh, we tell you that, okay, we are going to charge you when people are going to see your communication uh, till the end, okay? So you're not missing out. So that is assured uh, return on, on your investment. We are giving you targeted reach. So you mm. want female 18 plus in Bombay, Pune and Delhi. Mm. That's what you're going to get, which you cannot do on TV, on any linear, linear media, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we give targeted audience. We give the right context as well, which is in form of content that if your communication is all about, maybe uh, if it's an insurance brand, then you need a different uh, environment. You should ideally be cautious of that. We can offer that. We do offer right. that. So we're not, so we're offering audience, we're offering uh, the right frame of mind and we control the frequency of communication. So you want, you believe that your communication will work if someone sees it for four times, you can make sure that he doesn't see three times, he doesn't see five times, but he actually sees four times over a period of time. So that's the beauty of OTT platform and that's the winning edge over uh, TV and that's where the advertiser is finding most joy out of. Okay, so great uh, measurement tools and analysis and all that data and of course, uh, you know, cord cutters and cord fakers. That, those are new terms uh, that we uh, really picked up today. Uh, you know, uh, going deeper into this whole aspect of targeted um, uh, reach and targeted um, numbers, um, 
that you give your uh, brands and uh, the partnerships that you have, uh, you are not only competing in the award space with direct competitors on the OTT space, but also the entire, you know, uh, other media formats across the spectrum, like general TV and what have you. So what's mm -hmm. your strategy here when you uh, look at just disrupting the space, including the kind of tech tools and the technology that you're really bringing in? Uh, so what we have done is, we have A, made ourselves compliant to uh, the latest standards. For example, there is a compliance standard called MOAT and IES that ensures that viewability is perfect. It's not that we are showing an ad to, uh, to, to, to someone who doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. so, so we are 100% MOAT compliant, which means every viewer is a real viewer. Okay? We are Nielsen DAR compliant, okay? which means that uh, post delivery of campaign, today an advertiser can check out what was the percentage of on target reach mm. so for example if someone wanted to target female 21 plus audience in bombay delhi and bangalore and they can they can today verify and validate through third party like nielsen it's not any other third party but nielsen yeah. to say that okay fine my on target reach was x percentage like the global best standard is 70 percent of on target reach which means we are minimizing the spillover, which means there is no wastage or there is very low wastage. That's where we are. So we ensure that the advertiser's money uh, is invested in the right place. Uh, besides this, uh, we, we have a very extensive ad suite. I will very quickly take you through. Uh, uh, through, through it's a five prong kind of thing. There are five elements to our ad suite. Okay. So we have something called Ad Vault. Uh, now, Ad Vault helps connect with the right customer at the right place. What do we mean by that? And what is the benefit? It allows brands to propel their reach and create awareness and establish uh, appropriate brand messaging. It expands a brand's reach using multiple ad formats like video, display, uh, native, companion. There are various such uh, ad units that we have. Now, how do we do that? What does Ad Vault do? So, we basically have, if a consumer lands on to our to the ott platform there are various ad locations that we have so we allow people to pick up what suits the purpose if you want to drive an install campaign there are ad units that suit your purpose if you want to drive awareness then there are video formats that suit your purpose mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that if you want to just launch something then we even allow block all the ad units for a single day which is like a roadblock or a takeover so it depends so ad vault allows that Today, uh, all the brands are talking about blurring the line between media and communication, right? So what does it mean? So we have something called Amplify. That is uh, one of our fastest growing and getting very high acceptance in the market. So what it does is there are protagonists in every, uh, in, in every language and in every serial that we produce. Uh, there'll be at least 150 plus. Okay, they're very popular. And let me assure you, the uh, TV celebrities or TV-based protagonists sometimes can be even more popular than a mid-tier or a low-tier Bollywood celebrity or a sports personality. That's the level of reach they have. Now, what we do is we allow brands to leverage this network of ours and bring in the brand attributes, take the influencer along and create a very compelling communication and then amplify it on our platform. So it's like a one-stop shop. So it's, we work on turnkey basis. We've done some very exciting projects. I will share with you in due course. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is another one called Playfy where we engage through playful ways and, and consumer engagement is built through uh, engaging initiatives. Then we have something called Wishbox. These are all under development. Playfy and Wishbox uh, are under development uh, to an extent that we offer services, but scale is yet to be built. So Wishbox, that drives sales in the moment of truth through video commerce. So if you like this style and, and, and what uh, one of our protagonists is wearing in one of the serials, you could buy that look. So we are trying to build that area. That build area is still little underdeveloped. Uh, to top all these four units, uh, we have the fifth one and most critical one, which is called Infonomics. Now, what is Infonomics? Infonomics is all about data insights. Data, yeah. So today, you need to know what is the interest, what's the intent, what is the user into, what's he trying to find out. So uh, as simple as knowing the gender and mm -hmm. age of a user mm -hmm. to moving towards knowing what her interest areas are, what are their taste areas are. So we have multiple taste-based 
uh, when I say taste over here, taste is uh, type of content that they consume, length of content they consume, language of content that they consume. So there is there are hundred odd attributes for every single user on our platform. Mm -hmm. We put all of that information into something called CDP. Uh, CDP is consumer data platform, wherein we link all uh, the attributes on usage, on what you click, what you consume to your demographics, every single piece of information that we have on consumer is now sitting on a single platform, mm -hmm. leveraged by content for recommendation engine and leveraged by advertising, uh, rather ad ops and ad tech to decide whom should be shown what kind of communication at what part of time. Mm -hmm. so, so that's our overall investment on technology to power uh, the, the, uh, power this, the, the overall uh, advertising suite and to maximize the ROI for advertisers. So that's yeah. where we are. Really interesting to see the level of technology being used in this space as well to uh, you know, push brand engagement, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, there's also a lot of talk, uh, Rajiv, about digital marketing in a brand safe environment. And if we can touch upon that um, you know, uh, for a bit, uh, what does this environment really entail, a brand safe and, uh, you know, environment? And what does it mean for brands? Why should they really make a note of it when they go out there and uh, try to reach out to consumers? Very good question. Thanks for asking this question itself because uh, it is of utmost importance already for uh, many brands and would become the topmost priority for all the brands in due course. Now, what is brand safety? Let's take an example. Let's take an example of one of the most popular video consumption platform without naming them. Now, on uh, a video consumption platform, you're allowed to upload any form of content. This could be coming from any source. There is no authenticity. There is no license paid for the music that's, up, that's used in the uh, video. It could be a video which could be, uh, which could, may not be, could be of sensitive nature. Let's put it this way. It could be a video of, of showing anybody of any age in any form. Mm -hmm. So there's no control. What I'm trying to make is the environment is not controlled because it is UGC. And whatever systems any company may put behind, there'll always be leakages, okay? Now, today, a brand wants to interact with the consumer in the right environment. So imagine if there is a video which is uploaded uh, of maybe someone beating someone else, mm -hmm. and there is a brand that pops up around uh, before the uh, video or during the video, that leads to a very negative impression on the brand. And mm -hmm. Uh, brand marketers today are very concerned about that. So UGC platforms typically suffer a high incidence of brand safety issues because they cannot control beyond a point what goes on the platform. Vis-a-vis -vis OTT platforms, let's take an example of Z5. Every single piece of content that goes is obviously uh, going through the high quality standards that we have. And that we have maintained on TV and that we continue to maintain even on, on our OTT platform. Mm -hmm. So that ensures that the communication is served in an environment that's safe for the family uh, to watch it together most of the times or even watch it individually. So that's where the brand safety play comes into a critical. Uh, uh, today, it's, it's very important for brand marketers. You talk to Unilever, mm -hmm. you talk to PNG, you talk to Nestle, you talk to Dabur. You'll realize that one of the very, very uh, critical concern that they have with digital advertising is brand safety. Because you don't know programmatically your ad is getting served on what kind of content. And that can have a very strong negative impact. So with regards to brand safety, we offer 100% safe and compliant platform. So that's where we are. And that's, I think that's the advantage that OTT gets. And uh, we will ensure that that uh, benchmark is maintained. Right, and it becomes even more critical now where, you know, people uh, have increased digital consumption, uh, cyber security risks are also increasing by the day. Uh, so important points that you made there, Rajiv, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about return on marketing investments as well. You touched upon this uh, lightly earlier, but how are you really measuring and ensuring higher ROI for your partners? Uh, that's of utmost importance to us because marketers are going to continue investing in us if we offer them ROI, and I'm happy to say that we have upwards of 70% to 75% re-engagement with the marketers, which means repeat business is, is significantly high. Uh, that goes to indicate that we've been delivering ROI. 
Now, uh, so we have built an ad vault, uh, the whole five key elements within the ad vault. I will quickly take you through what I mean by that. Ad vault enables brands to drive KPIs by choosing from an array of ad solutions that we have built to see the, they suit the diverse business requirements in a complex digital world. Uh, ad vault leverages our prolific content catalog and helps in expanding a brand's reach by uh, helping them through multiple ad formats mm -hmm. uh, like video, display advertising, masthead advertising, native advertising, companion advertising. And they're available across various pricing models such as cost per click, cost per lead, cost per install, or most popular uh, cost per thousand uh, that we normally sell. So this offers like uh, whatever suits the needs of an advertiser, we are able to fulfill. So that gives, first of all, not a rigid choice to make. Like today on Linear TV, the advertising is only available in bundles of 10 seconds each. You cannot do much about it. You can't say that I don't want South uh, uh, Southern markets. You can't say I don't want Hindi speaking markets. You have to buy whatever is available. Whereas on our platform, A, you can buy the ad format that suits you, that suits your message in a format of buying that suits your KPI delivery and shown to the audience that's relevant for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it also delivers insights into brands KPIs to allow a better understanding of customer behavior through data and metrics. So we let the brand use predictive customer modeling to discover their customers needs, wants. How do we do that? Uh, let me just spend a few seconds on this. Uh, we are right now building a massive amount of data insights on our users through three possible ways. One, we are building first party data and there are enough research that's available to suggest that first party data is the most valuable piece of information that gives the highest level of on target reach and also gives deep insights into consumers that enhances value for publishers like us and also enhances value for advertisers. So first party data, what it means is data which is owned, controlled by us on our users. Right. To give an example, what is our user viewing? What, what's the total time spent by him? What kind of genre of content he watches or she watches? Mm -hmm. What time of the day do they consume content? Is it weekday? Is it weekend? What language of content are they watching? Uh, layer that with what kind of device do they have? What's the value of that device? Okay. Uh, layer on top of that, what kind of connectivity do they have? Do they have 3G connectivity, 4G connectivity, Wi-Fi connectivity? It speaks a lot. Then we are picking up the GPS signals. That tells us some understanding on, uh, is it workplace usage? Is it household usage? We go beyond that. Uh, we find the pin code of that user. So, we are, we, so these are all first party data that we are building on our user. Okay. We layer this with, so we don't know everything about our user. Our user, when he comes onto a platform, we start learning from there. But A, he has done enough. He has a digital footprint prior to coming to our platform. Mm -hmm. And he also has a digital footprint while he is with us on our platform. He's not exclusively on our platform. So then comes the need for second party data. For example, there are other companies who are also building similar kind of data profiles on their users. So we're trying to partner with them uh, on a trading deal wherein we maintain our users privacy. They maintain their users privacy, but we both share some information that could be insightful and that can help the advertisers and publishers. So this is all compliant data exchange platforms. Mm -hmm. We are trying to enhance the user profile. Now what it does is two things. A, it helps us build a unified profile that allows us to be very sure about what kind of content should be recommended mm -hmm. and B, what kind of advertising should be recommended. So that's what we are doing with regards to the data enablement plan at RN. Wow, it's really interesting to see the levels and the depth of data and research that you do, uh, you know, in terms of building a, a business that's relevant for both brands as uh, well as uh, the consumers, more importantly. So we've covered a lot in terms of, you know, the current environment for OTTs, the tech that's involved in the back end, the measurement tools, and what really brands are getting out of this. Uh, but let's talk about the output a little bit as well in terms of, you know, if you can go into detail about some of your brand associations, 
how are you engaging viewers uh, through uh, things like influencer marketing, uh, social hosted content? Uh, take us through some of your successful campaigns, um, if you like, and the kind of response that you received from your partners. Sure, sure, sure. So it's interesting. So we are right brain as well as left brain. So mm -hmm. we have muscle as well as we are sharp brain. I mean, it's like, you know, we, we, we need to offer everything to our advertisers. So one hand, we are massive in terms of our reach. Second, we are very sharp in terms of our user understanding. But besides these two, we also are very creative. So it's not that we are just offering a plain vanilla advertising to all our users. Right. Even we, we have no choice, I think, but to be creative these days. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll give you certain ideas on, on how we leveraged creativity and, and in what form. So we do have one of our service uh, called Amplify. Uh, mm -hmm. This is part of the Z5 ads ad vault. Amplify is where the content meets, uh, meets advertising. This is the service wherein we allow very innovative ways of influencer marketing, hosting content, brand integration, content marketing, sponsorships, everything. Everything that is creative led and that's getting into the realm of brand becoming communication himself. Uh, that, that's the area that Amplify works on. To give you an example, Asian Paints uh, is, a, is a very good example wherein uh, the idea or the task was to create an impactful influencer video that can establish the brand promise of Andar Bhi Shine, Bahar Bhi Shine. Okay. So why this was brought up? Because uh, the consumer insight that they had was that consumers in smaller towns, tier two, tier three towns, they look forward to maintaining their homes with a shine and long lasting paint that is often conveyed as their mark in the society. So, mm -hmm. ghar hua hona yeah. so that's the consumer insight that they had. Mm -hmm. And they, they reached out to us saying that, how can we do something about it? So uh, there is a very popular serial uh, TV series that uh, is also available on our platform on Z5 called Bhabi Ji Ghar Pe Hai. Now, mm -hmm. Bhabi Ji Ghar Pe Hai is extremely popular in the Hindi heartland and is liked by uh, male and female, both the audiences. It's like a family viewing kind of a platform. Mm -hmm. So we did a very simple thing. We said, okay, fine, let's go to the sets of Bhabi Ji Ghar Pe Hai. Mm -hmm. Let's take the key protagonists of Bhabi Ji Ghar Pe Hai and in their own style, weave this message of Andar Bhi Shine and Bahar Bhi Shine. Okay. That's how we created a vignette, which was a short duration vignette, uh, which had all these elements put together. And then, uh, we amplified it on Z5 platform mm. uh, and also on the social handles. And it got significantly high ROI for the brand. It mm. created buzz. And uh, yeah, so that's one example that, that we are very proud of. Uh, then we've done very good work with uh, Colgate uh, in, in the eighth season of Dadagiri as a show. Okay. So in this case, uh, Colgate wanted to amplify Smile Karo or Shuru Ho Jao campaign. Mm. Now, so that was the objective. Brand wanted to create an impact by not just sponsoring content. It, they didn't want to just say this show brought to you by Colgate, but actually creating an emotional connect with the audience where it can relate to real life moments of a consumer's life. Mm. Now, this was a very interesting brief and we started thinking. And then we finally came out with uh, a solution. So what we did was video profiles of social workers were created. The core idea was to be able to support the cause these people have been working on and create awareness for their work. These videos captured how a smile was symbolic of yes. hope, courage, confidence, optimism for them when they're faced with challenges. So the essence of campaign Smile Karo or Shuru Ho Jao remained at the core of whatever we did. This was also amplified on the platform and Rand was extremely happy uh, with these kind of creative solutions. So we right now, just to give an example, uh, the busiest department that we have uh, within our company is Amplify. They, any given point of time, they work on 150 briefs. Mm. Every, every brand today and every brand, every agency partner of ours, they are working on something or the other which is in the area of branded content. So that is, that is one of the fastest up and coming segment. Right. I can only imagine, you know, you said that they are your uh, busiest uh, business vertical right now with everyone going digital. 
uh, clearly uh, we are not going to run out of business anytime soon uh, at least on the ott platforms uh, but you know um, it is largely a full medium uh, if you look at it audiences uh, have the freedom to accept or reject content so how are you pushing for discoverability of content and attracting the right viewers sure uh, so what we have done is we have created as i mentioned a uh, few seconds back something called unified user profile uh, so unified user profile means that every action that the user is taking on the platform be it clicking an ad to clicking a content to how much time to what time of the day everything is getting continuously captured and it is enriching through machine learning and the way machine learning works is it it, it keeps educating itself and keeps learning about the user and keeps training our content recommendation engine and ad recommendation engine recommendation in engine in return is able to predict preferences which are based on taste profiles of our users and start recommended both the things content as well as advertising mm. which has a very high chance of getting consumed by a particular user so that's what uh, we are trying to do this process ensures that we offer unique experience to every single user and offer them content from a massive library now imagine uh, we have 145000 hours of content if we leave someone onto a platform and offer him everything the guy will be confused so we do this job of even sorting it out curating it and the moment people start interacting with us which is start showing their intent explicitly or implicitly we start learning about their preferences build a profile around those people start recommending things that we believe would be consumed better uh, by those users so you can well imagine that if there are 70 million users mm -hmm. then there are 70 million unique uh, uh, profiles at our end who are getting treated in a very unique manner so it's not that one size fits all kind of an approach at all right, right. this personalized to a level of an individual not even a household not a city not a mohalla but every single individual platform so this is the only way hmm. only way for any company to make sure that people don't pull out right and a very relevant technical uh, strategy there uh, you know closing um, thoughts and uh, question to you rajiv what are your plans for uh, 2020 uh, times have changed as we you know said at the onset a uh, lot more uh, movement towards digital consumption so what are your plans in 2020 now in terms of uh, new show launches um, as well as in house um, sort of uh, original content and brand tie ups sure so uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll share a broader perspective with you. Z5 will evolve from just being an OTT app to a super app for entertainment. And what it means is we will offer all kinds of content that includes gamification. So we have recently rolled out something called Play5 uh, that includes kiddie content. We have just rolled out uh, kids as a segment with 4,000 hours of content. It will include live news. Now live, we have, we have uh, almost close to 50 live channels and we are seeing a significant traction on live news. Uh, we are launching Hyper Shots, which is going to be the micro content, wherein we will also allow users very soon to start uploading their content that's of high quality. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so we are going to be a super app of entertainment. That's what our, uh, our, our overall mission is uh, going forward. Uh, but you know, it is not enough. So content variety is not enough. Mm. Uh, as you would have noticed, technology plays a critical role in every single decision making at our end. So on technology front, we are investing in our audiences who reside in smaller towns and rural areas where device and data speeds may not match up to those in the bigger cities. So we are coding, transcoding, and building content in small bytes so that any phone and any player can actually hold it together and is able to watch. So every we, we want to become device agnostic, connectivity agnostic kind of a player. We are not going to force people to consume on a particular uh, platform only. We will be kind of reaching where the user is rather than forcing user to come our way. Uh, so that's that's what we believe. Great offering there, Rajiv. Basically, like you said, super app that's offering everything under one umbrella. So uh, no reason to really leave or 
uh, create churn there. Um, on a lighter note, any personal favorites? Because you know everyone's busy quizzing each other, asking uh, what is the new series uh, to watch, uh, the latest movie, or you know the comedy that you're watching online. So uh, every platform, I'll have different choice. On Z5, I can tell you for sure, Ghoom Ketu is something not to be missed out on, mm -hmm. and uh, and and you should watch out that space for many more new releases. That's that's definitely going to happen in in near future. Bombard is another very good quality content, okay. uh, so you should watch out. Mental Hood a while back mm -hmm. was launched on Z5. That's again very good quality uh, content. So there, there there's lot. There's lot. So my favorite is is Ghoom Ketu right now, okay. and uh, so I I love that movie and I I love Nawazuddin mm -hmm. Siddiqui. So yeah, it's a good watch. Okay, so we'll take you up on those recommendations, Rajiv. Uh, we'll uh, end it here. Thank you so much uh, for all the insight and all the great uh, you know offerings that Z5 is of course coming up with. Good to know about that. Uh, good to know about uh, the level and the depth of uh, technology as well as um, you know consumer outreach that you are uh, ensuring for your brands so thank you so much for your time and to our uh, viewers stay safe um, stay healthy of course uh, and more essentially stay entertained thank you so much for watching thank you thanks for having me thank you bye bye